Today is all about how a snake thinks. We're going to get into their brain and see if we can figure out what's going on in there. You better not try to be funny and get into my brain. You know, I think that'd probably just be a big waste of time, Kent. It sure would. Oh, wait. A good way to understand any animal is to try to think about things from their perspective. It keeps us from anthropomorphizing the animal. Understanding your snake's brain is going to lead to better interactions, less misunderstandings, and probably a better quality of life in general for the snake. We're not going to get bogged down in scientific brain talk in this video, but I am linking in the description a review of 37 scientific papers that all concluded that reptiles have much larger brain capacity than we once thought, and that they're capable of a range of certain emotions. It used to be thought that the reptile brain only processes instincts and they have no emotion at all because their brain is structured so differently than ours and they don't have the part of the brain that we have where we process emotions. We are emotional creatures, but we're also pretty narcissistic. Just because an animal doesn't have a brain like a mammal's doesn't mean that they can't have things like emotions located somewhere else in the brain, which has turned out to be the case. So if you were taught a long time ago about the stupid, instinct-only reptile brain, like most of us were, no big deal. Just know that there's new science out, and it makes these animals way more fascinating than they once were. This is Ron, by the way. He's been a lot more interested in roaming lately, so I'm trying to let him do that. So here's a short list of things that I could think of that help me understand my snakes a little bit better. You doing good there, buddy? You gonna go through that ball? Okay. Modes. So as a quick reminder, I want to cover the modes that Kevin McCurley over at Nerd talks about. This is a really great way of describing how an animal thinks, or how a reptile thinks anyway. Sleeping, feeding, fear, and thinking mode. Notice that thinking mode is its own mode. The other ones are not thinking. Those are just instinct triggers. In feeding mode, a heat signature will just automatically trigger a strike. When a snake is in fear mode, that triggers a fight or flight response. These modes are natural and okay for the snake to be in from time to time, but what we want from our pets is thinking mode. My guess is that in the wild, snakes probably live most of their life in the other three modes because those are what keep the snake alive. But in captivity, we wanna minimize fear mode as much as possible. We wanna manage feeding mode and we wanna encourage thinking mode as much as we can. Letting them sleep is a good thing to do too, you know? That covers the sleeping mode portion of this video. Everything else will be about your snake when it's awake. Can we just move this? Let's just, let's just do a little swap. Let's just swap that out so people can see you. I took the time to move that ball and now you're leaving. I tried. By the way, because everybody asks, this ball was 3D printed for me. You can't buy it somewhere. It was on a base and it's really light because it's 3D printed material. So the snakes kept knocking it down. I just gorilla glued it to the top of a hide. Works great, but it's not something you can buy somewhere. All right, let's get back to this video. When a snake has different positive experiences, their brain develops the capacity to deal with more different experiences. When I raise a snake from a hatchling, I like to give them supervised areas that they can explore. So I put them up on the counter, I put them in the playpen, I give them all kinds of different enrichment items, I allow different people to hold them so it's not just me all the time. Every time they have a different experience, even if it's a little scary at first, but they realize that nothing bad happened to them, that develops neural pathways in their brain that tell them that they can handle different experiences. It doesn't always mean danger. That sets them up for the rest of their life to not immediately go into fear mode. Now we're gonna talk later about cautious thinking mode where they're a little bit nervous as they explore something, which is still thinking mode, it's not fight or flight. And that's what we're trying to avoid is that fight or flight situation. Let's talk about a snake's brain processing speed. Snakes process things a lot slower than other mammals, humans, dogs, cats, whatever. Which is why just whipping your snake's cage open and reaching in for them really quick might trigger a fight or flight response. You haven't given them the time to figure out what's going on and you go, come on, man, it's just me. You all, we always do this, we do it every day. No, they need time every single time to figure out what's happening, especially if the snake is cold. You know, we talk about that a snake needs time to warm up before they start moving around and get physically active, but it's the same for their brain. Their brain needs time to warm up so that it can start thinking. Dude, you're gonna fall. This isn't cool, come here. Come over here, crazy. Man, you gotta watch these snakes because if you've got a non-arboreal snake like a ball python and they're up high, they will fall. 
and this guy's a daredevil. Why did you distract me? I forgot where I was. What was I even talking about? Oh, the cold. We were talking about the cold. I know where we're at. So, yeah, they need even more time if the snake is cold. And so when I do anything like when I put my snakes back in their enclosure, I usually show them their enclosure, let them tongue flick around for a moment, realize it's their home, and then they'll go in on their own. I don't just take them and plop them in there because all of a sudden now they're in a new environment and it's a little scary until they figure out, oh, I'm home. On that same note, I was reading an article a long time ago about scientists talking about how time moves at a different pace for certain animals, slower or faster, or whatever. This is just speculation on my part, but my guess is that the way time moves for snakes is, um, I don't know if you would say slower or faster. So let me just describe it and you, you can figure it out and call it whatever we want. But my guess is that they're processing things one at a time. It takes them a moment and they're not focusing on, a, I don't think they're able to focus on a whole bunch of other things. So let's say you have your dog out for a walk and you're bringing him back inside. That dog knows exactly what's going on. He sees the, the porch steps, he runs up them, he's scratching on the door as you're opening it up and he runs in and in the moment he knew everything that was happening, right? Now let's say you have your snake outside and you just had him out in the sun for a little bit on the grass or whatever and you go to pick him up and you just take him right back inside. By the time the snake registers that it's you picking him up and not a hungry falcon, He's already inside. Now, once he, he's, he's finally figured out that it's you and he's being dropped down somewhere else, whether it's his home or maybe you put him on the counter or whatever or on the floor. And now he's got to figure out where he is. So I always try to go a little bit slower with my snakes. So if I'm outside and I have them out there and they're on the ground, I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, I usually try to show them who I am before, like I'll let them tongue flick on my hand a little bit to realize that it's me. And then I'll slowly pick them up let them hang out for a second. Once we're in the house, a lot of times I'll either, I'm either gonna put them away, but a lot of times I'll, I'll do something like this. I'll put them up here, but I'm not gonna just drop them up here. I'm gonna let him see where he is and choose to crawl off my arm and onto this spot where he's probably gonna be a daredevil again. Don't get yourself into trouble. I don't wanna have to catch you. I do watch them closely because a ball python really is likely to fall if they're up somewhere. They don't, they don't know that they're gonna fall. They're usually okay. If a, if a snake falls, it's usually fine, but it's oftentimes not. They could break a rib, injure their spine, all kinds of stuff. So you don't want them falling off things. That's a little bonus tip. I've got Delilah out now. By the way, if anyone has recently purchased a snake from me, there's a good chance that Delilah is the mom and Ron is the father of your animal. Uh, I gotta save Ron again. I gotta put him back because he's being crazy. Come on, buddy. Let's put you back. Ron and Delilah. They make cool babies. When we do have a snake out that is cruising around in thinking mode, they're having a good time, we sometimes forget that there are these other instinct modes that they could slip into. I'm gonna use Echo, my super dwarf reticulated python, as an example. She's a good example because her species is more likely to do this than, let's say, a ball python, although a ball python could do it as well. Echo is a highly intelligent snake. She is target trained. She knows me well, she, we have a good relationship, but when she slips into one of those other modes, her thinking brain shuts off. So she could be cruising around up and down the ladder, interacting with me, coming over and seeing what I'm doing, crawling onto my arms, my shoulders, whatever. And she could come back here and curl up. She didn't even have to be curled up, but, but just stopped and kind of she'll get herself into sort of an ambush position. And when that happens, thinking brain shuts off. And what that means is that if my heat signature comes anywhere within strike distance, she's gonna strike. She's not trying to eat me. She's not trying to bite me. It's just that she's in that new mode and she's not thinking about anything. She could also be asleep and still in feeding mode. So if my hand gets within about six or eight inches of her, she'll strike and her teeth will be in me before either of us realize it. That's sleeping mode and feeding mode all at the same time, neither of which involve thinking. By the way, once she's bit and has something in her mouth, now she's really in food mode because she's gonna eat something and her brain still doesn't kick in. It doesn't go into thinking mode. So there, at no point does she realize, oh, I couldn't possibly eat this. I'm gonna talk about this next one while I scroll a complete list of our Patreon supporters. These are the fine folks who make up the exclusive membership of the secret society known as the Horde of Keepers. Don't be offended if you get bit. If my dog McKenna bit me, I would feel insulted and betrayed because McKenna knows me and loves me. She's technically not my dog, she's my neighbor's dog, but 
She's over here all the time, so I feel like we share custody. But if my snake bites me, it's important to remember what was going on in the snake's brain at the time, or maybe what wasn't going on in their brain. I don't feel insulted or upset with the animal because it was always my fault. This only happens when I'm not paying enough attention to the snake's body language to understand what's going on. I mentioned this in a video a couple weeks ago that it usually happens during a live stream when I'm not really paying attention. Now, once I get her unlatched from me, she can go right back into thinking mode and exploring and I have, we have no problem. I could put my hand or my arm right in front of her face moments after she's bitten me and she would crawl on my arm or come and hang out with me. I mean, I usually don't do that. I just put her back in the cage, but theoretically. So really don't get upset if that snake who interacts with you all the time and is super comfortable with you sometime bites you out of a defense or a food response. Thank you so much to all those members of the Horde of Keepers. Those guys are fantastic. They're keeping the channel going. And thanks to our channel sponsors, Black Box Cages, Lane Labs, and Gray Family Snakes. Look at that, there's your discount codes. Have you ever noticed when you have your snake out on the ground or on the bed or anything like that and they're cruising around and then you go to pick them up, you might get one of two reactions. One of them is a non-reaction and the other one is either flinching or trying to race away. Again, we can't take this personally because this isn't like if you had a chicken and you're trying to pick up your chicken and it's like, no dude, get away from me. That you can also think of this like a rabbit too. Either a rabbit or a chicken, whatever. And they're running away from you. They know exactly who you are and the reason they're running away is they don't want you to pick them up. A snake is different. I'm gonna use Stella for this example because she does it a lot. When she's out in the room and interacting with me, she does just fine. She can be on the floor and as long as she knows I'm there, I can pick her up and there's no problem. But if she is in what she perceives as a new environment, she's gonna be super cautious and I'm gonna see her slowly exploring, not moving around all crazy like she normally does. So this is thinking mode, but cautious thinking mode. At that point, if I go to pick her up, She's forgotten that I'm there. She doesn't know if it's me or that hungry falcon that they're always worried about. Anya does it too, but she doesn't try and race away, she flinches. Don't you? We, we don't try to scare you, right? By the way, a new environment to a snake is different than a new environment to us. To me, this room is the environment. I can put a blanket on the floor and I'm still in the environment. But if I put the snake on that blanket, they're now on something new and there could be predators. If I rearrange the countertop, even though they've been on the countertop tons of times and I change the hides and put different stuff on there, all of a sudden that's a new environment and there could be predators. So that's the mentality that the snake is always coming from is, do I know this area? Is there predators? Should I be worried? And when they're cautiously exploring, you gotta be careful to not trigger that fight or flight response. Fortunately, Stella has never exhibited fighting. It's always flight. That snake can fly? No, Kent, just, I mean, quickly moving away. Just stay on task with the camera. Okay, but if that snake starts flying around the room, I'm quitting. See you guys, that's a good example of predictable behavior. No, it's not. Maybe I won't quit. Maybe I'll sue. You have no idea what my next move is. Well, either way, mom would probably find out. <laughs> Why do I care? I'm an adult, she's not the boss of me. That's not even something I worry about. Should we call her? No. Okay, well, that's settled, I guess. So again, I'm not gonna be offended if the snake is trying to flee my hands because she's not trying to escape me, she's trying to escape a predator. The better way to pick them up in that scenario is to show them your hand really carefully and from kind of far away. Let them remember that it's you. Don't do this if they're in food mode and don't do this if they tend to strike. But as long as you know your snake, show them your hand, let them tongue flick on it a little bit, remember that it's you and then pick them up and you won't startle them. On that same note, if your snake knows you well, your hand is meaningful. So if I have a snake that's in a new area, they're nervously exploring around, they're not too sure of themselves, I find it helpful to show them my hand, not in a threatening way, but, but just let them tongue flick a little bit on my hand to let them know it's kind of like letting them know that I'm there, but I think what's really going on with the snake is that they know these hands and they know that they're safe. It doesn't matter if the hands are attached to me or how they feel about me, but they know that these hands will never hurt them. They might be annoying to them sometimes. I'm sure I'm sure they are, but they're not. Uh, There's something that they're familiar with that is not a threat. So I think the snakes can mentally anchored to that and they go, oh, here's a familiar thing. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the area at all, but here's a familiar thing. And you can see their body relax 
when this happens, they, they become less stiff. And sometimes they'll crawl onto my hand, especially a young snake that's unsure of themselves. They'll crawl right onto my hand because that feels better. But a lot of times, the bigger snakes, they'll just relax and start exploring. The way I offer my hand is really important though. So if this is a table, if the snake is exploring on a table, I'm gonna, she won't even do it because she's not nervous, but, but what I'm gonna do is come up from below with my hand. So it's not, so I'm not coming at her like this threatening. Right, I'm just gonna come up from below and I'm gonna hold my hand away and let her come to me. So I'm not putting my hand right up in her nose. Again, it takes them a minute to realize who that is and what's going on and if they're nervous anyway, a fast movement of putting, throwing your hand in front of their face is gonna really freak them out. So you gotta do it very slowly and, and by slowly I, I mean about like this and stop when you're several inches away from their face and let them come the rest of the way to you. You can also retreat a little bit so that it's less threatening. You know, whatever, whatever you need to do for the snake, you kind of have to feel it out because every snake is an individual. You can do this with anything the snake knows. You can do it with a hide. I have occasionally shipped the little temporary disposable plastic hides that I use for my hatchlings. I'll occasionally ship one with a hatchling and I don't wash it first. It's not dirty by any means, but it has the snake smell on it. So when that snake gets to its new owner, they can put that hide in the enclosure temporarily and the snake can anchor to that because that's the hide that they use. It has their smell and they know it. It's gonna help them get used to their new environment a lot faster. Quick disclaimer, I don't do that very often and I don't do it by request. I just do it in the rare occasion that I have a hatchling that's super shy and I feel like they could benefit from that security blanket in shipping and in their new home. So these are just a few examples that I could think of over the last few days, but having an understanding of how your snake thinks is gonna help you immensely in interacting with and approaching your snake. It's all about trying to think from their perspective as a snake, not as a person or as a dog or a cat. They are pretty unique creatures with fascinating behavior. Speaking of which, if you're itching for more content like this, here's a behavior video right here that you can click on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Thank you.